Hey, so back again with the seat track and really today I wanted to focus on my process of using it because really it does just live on my desk over here and every five minutes I might just chuck an idea together and see what the seat track can do. And it's a very capable little machine like drum machine, a couple of synths, all the effects, you've got a nice little box to capture an idea and make a simple little loop but there is a lot under the hood that I wanted to highlight and go from that initial loop stage right into the song mode on this machine and get something together that you can put out. So in the end, let's stop talking about it and get straight into it. All right, we're here with the Yamaha C track and really this one's just gonna be a bit of a walkthrough as I make something with it. Just a Sunday afternoon and I do apologize, the aircon is running in the background. Unlike the Northern Hemisphere, it's quite toasty down here coming up to Christmas. So we'll just have a bit of a look and for this one, I'm just gonna load up a patch and with this one, we only have eight to pick from. But I just find this is like a noodle box for me right now. So I just come in, delete something and off I go. So to delete your whole project, delete that one. I'm just going to select that one, load it up. Sweet. So with this one, we'll probably start off with the drums and work our way towards the synths and like see what we can make with it. And oh, I'm feeling a bit techno-ish, but you can sample the sounds by clicking the rotary encoders up here. So if we wanted to change the sample, as you can see, you got sound lit up here. Um, these sort of relate to the four, so there's a button down here that took me a while to figure out, so you can switch between the menus. But you can use that to change up the variables by using these four knobs. So if I go back to the first menu, we'll just go through. Get some randomness going. Sounds interesting. Let's see what we can make with it. So there is a 16 step sequencer down here on the side. So if I was to, got a bit of a rumble. Might just. Yeah, that's something to start with. That snare's probably a bit abrupt for me. There we go, something like that. So right there, just mucking around, we've got a simple little beat going, and that's really just going through and just picking some of the sounds. And like, I've got a bunch of other sounds as well. Maybe I'll do a bit of an overlay with the snare and clap so I can do some. Sounds interesting. So I think that's enough with the drums. Let's have a look at our synths. And we've got three of them here. We've got two sort of analog ones, one FM one, and then a sampler as well with a bunch of samples that we can control as well. But let's pick a baseline for this one. So same thing again, I'm just going to scrub. Let's see what we can do with that one. So what we can do, we can either like play it like that. You can like program it in by holding a note and going like that. Um, but another way is that you can live record it as well. Now if you don't like any of that, you can go that and delete and you can try again. And really this comes down to a scale because as you can see, we've got eight notes here. That's not too many to play with. You can sort of load up if you hold the all and press key. You get a full keyboard. Uh, we can turn that off by just doing that as well. But this is a nice little way to just plot in notes and not think about it. You just know where they are relative. So that's the lowest note and that's the highest note but we can change the scale. So if we click the one up here, you can see how this dot is changing through. So you can just try out different things and see how it's going to sound. So just experiment and come up with something that you like. So I'm just going to try again. So I think that's a good little starting point. And if we want to change up the sound on here, same thing again, we can use that button to go through and select so we can change that filter and then we can scroll through. So 
And sometimes if you hold a note, you can actually scrub through and change it up. So see how this one's a little bit purpler? It doesn't really show on the camera, but... but. So let's have a look at the second one and maybe we add something here. I uh, might switch it up a little bit more. Something like that. Maybe we change the octave. And we can change that bar length so we've got eight bars of it. And let's just live record something. So I like that little pad pattern I've got going, but I probably want to take away some of that low end just so the kick drum has something by itself. I've just soloed it, but what we can do is use that little button under here and we can just navigate so we can get access to that filter and just bump it up a little bit. And then if we turn off the solo, we can hear that still in the background, but it's not taking up a bit with the kick. So next, let's have a look at the FM because it does have a lot of interesting stuff here and usually I use it like a lead on here because it's got some pretty bright and buzzy sound. Let's hear it in context. I reckon that'll sound better being an octave lower. And what I might do is make this four bars long and just do a bit of a live play. So I've got a few boo-boos in there, but we can clean them up. Cool, so I'm pretty happy with it, but let's have a look at what sort of samples we can throw in here. So it's got some interesting ones. Cool, so I've got something set up for there, so let's give it a few bars and we'll see what we can come up with. Alright, so we've got something interesting that's come together and I think we can have a little bit of a look at this sort of FX area so we can have a bit of a live play with our loop and then probably start moving towards a song mode. But we've got something interesting here, but we can use the filter here as well as we can apply it to a single area or across the whole board by using that switch and then you just use that to drive it in and we've got a bunch of different reverbs delays compression distortion there's a bunch of stuff in here so you can have a bit of a live play doing that. Next we have some two hard filters here. So we have a repeater as well as a high pass. So high pass being, we can sort of DJ the sound and repeater gets a little bit aggressive. But... And just with those three parts, like you have like your own custom sort of effect that you want to live play as well as those two others. You could be sitting here just mucking around with different loops and being able to like just modulate and create some really interesting little jams that usually pretty much this machine I've probably put like 20 to 50 different patterns through just lives on my desk if I'm not happy with it I delete it off if I like it I'll continue on and I think this is where this would be good to show off the song mode because right now we've got a single loop that's playing along and let's say we want to change it up make something else out of it and we can do that by using this to scrub between the two different elements so we can also adjust the entire lot at once as well, but these ones don't have anything on there. So we just got that single kick. So how do we start building out a different sound? And one we can just plot in. So like before I had like a, I think my kick drum wasn't that spectacular. 
yeah so i can add different elements take elements out probably bring some ghost notes in so what happens if you want to copy and paste so hold the one that you want press the note you'll see this flash there we go holding still hold page and then press the one you want and it should flash like that once it's done you can go under that menu and there's the platen there so we made our looping points and now I think we're ready for song mode. So if you hit all and project, you'll think, see everything light up a purple. It's a bit hard to see on the camera, but this allows us to change the way our sounds work. So you can come in here and mute. You can do uh, other things. You can change a sound. And then if you go into the next one, see how everything goes back to the default. So we can use this to construct our song from all the different bits we were having. So maybe I have maybe just the kick drum and the snare and those things. So if we listen to that. And then the second one, maybe we bring in the snare. So if you want to delete something, you can hold the delete button. You'll see that will turn red. But if you want to change the length, because each one of these are going to be eight bars long and it might be a bit too long for what you're trying to sculpt, what you can do is hold down the page. So I've just set this one up here and then hold down page. And if you scroll through all, as you can see, I'm just going to get my hands out of the way, how it works by scrolling left and right. So if you want this four bars long, you can go like that and have it so it's just sitting actually no it'd be sitting there that would be four bars long so that first part will play four bars and if you were to play this you start from the start hit play it's going to run through so that's first bar it's two three four and it should change over and if you want to live play this as well you can actually make it press a button and it's going to jump to that sequence so you could have this on stage and you just got all these patterns set up and you're just bouncing around here same thing you can come into there you go so you can see how the song mode works as well so you can come up some with them interesting ideas you can record it you can create something like this i've just got to go to a sound interface so that's my process with the seek track there is a lot more that's going on but really if i enjoy a loop so i just make something quick just mucking around and choosing some different sounds and just letting those sounds guide me to something that's interesting or i just delete it and start something else i don't get too precious but it does create some really nice little nuggets so I hope that's given you a bit of food for thought because really it doesn't look that too much on the surface but under the hood is quite capable and if you haven't yet definitely look at the app it's got that dynamic tutorial on there and it's going to show you all those button combos that I've highlighted today as well as looking through the manual because there's a lot of little nuggets in there to get the most out of this machine and in the end if you did like this one and you did enjoy this walkthrough definitely give it a thumbs up. It does point this to other people, other people that are probably looking at how to use this machine for the first time. And if you had any comments or queries, because I feel like I glaze over some things, feel free to leave them down below. I do go down there and answer as many questions as I can. Seeing how this device has a lot more than what it is, uh, it's good to have that conversation all in one space. And if you're looking for extra Seek Track content, I do have a couple of videos coming along. So if you want to see that content, I look forward to seeing you next time.